Uh, joining us, though, this morning to talk about the extraordinary events of happened in the house yesterday and also to tell me how to pronounce her surname properly um, is Karen. Sh- now, Karen, tell me, <laughs> what's, how do I pronounce the surname? Uh, it's chore, like do your chores. Oh, thank you. See, I was wrong. I, I said it's either chow because I just went ow and added the ch, um, but it's chore. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. I suppose a lot of people ask you, do they? Yes. It, it, it's spelt, it, it's spelt um, quite differently, so people do ask it a lot. Yes, you must get annoyed having to say it's chore and then they put C-H-O-R-E down and you say no. It's C-H-H-O-U-R, do you? Yes, yes, it's definitely one of those things. <laughs> yeah. Hey, um, yesterday in the house, we'll talk about what happened in a minute, but I'm really interested in your background because your background is such an important part of what happened in the house yesterday. You were raised in state care. Yeah, I spent, I spent a, a good chunk of my um, childhood um, dealing with child youth and family um, as growing up. Um, so I understand... Um, when things can go wrong and I understand um, how it feels to be shuffled from place to place and no one listening to you. Yes. And and you were shuffled. So you, you're in your, what, 40s now? Yes. Um, so, this, <laughs> so this happened during your childhood or your adolescence? Uh, from about the age of 10, I was dealing with um, child youth and family. Right. Uh, when you say you were dealing with them, I, 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 you mean your whānau or your family was? Well, it was me. I originally ran away from home um, and, and cried out for help. Uh, and I, I took myself um, to child youth and family the first time. And unfortunately, um, they let me down and, and I was sent back to the same situation that I'd run away from. So that's the first failure of the system to me. Yeah, I mean, 10-year-olds don't usually do that. Um, and so yeah, you, you've, there's a book in you I can feel a book to be perfectly honest with you but I, I won't go through that this morning um, you got elected mm. on the list at the last election uh, which part of the country do you live in? in um, on the North Shore in Auckland right. um, the Upper Harbour electorate okay and you're married um, your, your husband's Cambodian I take it Yes, uh, he he came here as a baby, um, as a Cambodian refugee. Oh gosh! Um, and look at you now. His, his, oh, yeah, it, his, his parents are, 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 are some are people that I really look up to. I mean, they've been through an awful lot that, that what we can't comprehend, and, and they've made a success of themselves in this country. And I'm really proud of them. Do they um do they escape the Pol Pot regime and everything? The Khmer, Khmer Rouge. Yes. Thing? Yes. Yes, and then they ended up in a camp in Thailand um, while they waited for um, refugee status. So what does your husband do now for, for a job? Um, so my husband um, works in telecommunications um, and he, um, he works w- with Vodafone. Right. So what an extraordinary... St- I mean, already I'm, I'm impressed because I'm going... Here are two people from the kinds of backgrounds that should not be productive members of our society, and you've <laughs> you've more than overachieved. Do you have kids? Yes, so we've got four children. Um, we started rather early, um, and, and and we've worked our way through. I've I've been married um, to Ming for twenty years now, and um, we've built a life together. And it hasn't always been easy, um, but I just came to Parliament to try and um, make a difference in in the lives of our young people, um, so they don't go through what I went through, um, fighting fighting a system that doesn't seem to want to listen um, to, our, to our young people and their concerns. So how did you um, have this exchange? What was the background to this exchange yesterday? Was, was this a, a general debate or was this something specifically connected with the Ranga Tariki? Oh, this was just um, a question time. Oh, really? Um, I was, yeah, this was just at question time. Um, I was questioning the minister on some contracts um, with John Tamahiri's um, charities and and just concerned around um, some of the accusations that were being uh, have been um, 
well, the investigations that are going around John Tamahiri's um, charities and just wanted to know, you know, is the minister concerned? And, and if, the, if his charity does get struck off the charity's list, um, will OT reconsider their contract um, with this charity? So it was a genuine question and, and the response um, actually quite shocked me. And, uh, yes, um, he's... Um this is John Tamahiri, just to explain to our listeners, his, in, his charities are being investigated essentially for giving money from registered charities to his mayoral campaign and to, I think, support him in his candidacy as a Tapati Māori candidate at the last election. Those are the allegations. Have I got yes. that right? Yes, that's correct. Um, and, and, you know, if, if it is found that they've done something wrong, there's a risk that that charity will be struck off the charities list. Um, and, and that could be a major problem. And OT's just entered into a big contract with with, with the charity. And, and I just want to know what's going to happen with that, that contract if, if this happens. Wow. Wow. So, um, so it's, so, it's so, a very th- genuine question. Right. And um, the answer that and, came... And, and the response was... And the answer, mm, it was uncalled for. So the response that comes back basically says, girl, uh, you need to stop being a Pākehā and come into the Māori world. Um, essentially, that was it. Yes. And yeah, and, and, and being told not to look t- through a vanilla lens, um, w- which I find um, uh, quite offensive. Uh, there, there's many things in there that um, come to question. Um, we're all New Zealanders. We're all, we're all one people at the end of the day, and we want what's best for all New Zealanders. And a comment like that is just unhelpful. Um, we're ba- is he saying that if you don't look at the world through a Māori lens, you don't have a right to question this government um, and question and make genuine questions to what's going on within government decisions? Well, yes, I mean, essentially he is saying that, that there is one law for Māori and there's one law for non-Māori and if non if Māori don't observe the law, in this particular case, the rules and regulations of the Charities Commission, um, you should cut them some slack because they're Māori. If, if I, is, is that the argument in a nutshell? Well, I mean, um, there could be many interpretations of how he answered that and that's just one of them. Um, and and that's the problem, right? Um, when when we resort to to race racial um, arguments like that, it can open up a can of worms to the interpretation of, of what they're meaning by that. Um, and it'd be nice if that was clarified. Will you be asking further questions um, to try and clarify that? Uh, when I get a chance, um, that would be something that I will be thinking about asking in the background to clarify clarify that question and, and, and clarify it a bit better for us, right? Because the language is changing and, and, and you can change the language. You have to bring the rest of New Zealand with you so that we understand that language um, because partnership, is very open to interpretation. Contracts aren't. Um, so what is this? Is it a partnership? Is it a contract? Uh, and and is it being negotiated differently? Mm. Mike Moore, the Labour Party leader, made the observation to me once. He said that there are only two, in actual fact, democracies in the entire Southern Hemisphere that work. And he actually mentioned that one of them was New Zealand and the other was Australia and that everything else was just um, different strands of corruption. Uh, And he always mentioned to me the fact that the reason that these democracies work is that they're predominant. It was the English set them up. So there were understandings, if you like, about what your roles and responsibilities were. But one of the things he made to me, and he said, and he was very clear about it, and he was the Prime Minister of Australia, leader of the Labour Party, he said... "Um, the reality, though, is that if you go into a Pacific Island community or an Asian community or South American community, what we call nepotism, um, they call culture. Um, do you see something of that in this? Uh, uh, not, not necessarily. Uh, I, I, 
I would just it just it just goes to show that we need to have this conversation um, because there is a lot of confusion going on at the moment. We're hearing words like New Zealand has changed, democracy has changed, and to me, we're all New Zealanders, right? And when you're in government and when you're in power, you're meant to be representing the whole of New Zealand and representing everybody in New Zealand, especially in my portfolio, where I'm really worried about the direction um, we're going in for our most vulnerable children. Uh, I'd like to see a minister that's there to represent all our children, um, not just a certain nationality, because yes, Māori might be overrepresented within Oranga Tamariki, but we're a multicultural society now in New Zealand, and we have many children that have dealings with Oranga Tamariki, not just Māori, and, and, and we need to be looking at the best interests for all our children and have a children's minister that can see that, that the best interest should be paramount over and above everything else. Why are there, Karen, so many Māori uh, who are in the care currently or um, the responsibility of Oranga Tamariki? Why? You see, the thing that I can't understand is this, and let me explain it. Um, when I look at the socioeconomic status of Māori with, compared with European, compared with Pacific Islanders, compared with Asian, um, I accept that Māori are at the bottom of that socioeconomic step, but if I was going to grade it on those ethnicities, but they are probably just about the same as or a little bit above Pacific Island communities. Why, though, uh, is there a disproportionate number of young Māori in the Oranga Tamariki system? Even, well, even, even, when, it, even when you take out the socioeconomic lens, you know. Yeah, I mean, that's a million-dollar question, right? Um, every situation is different, and I, I try not to look at it in, in a racial lens like that um, because as a child, I wanted to be seen as a child, not a statistic, and I wanted to be seen for who I was and not um, I'm lumped into the statistic as just another Māori in the care of, of Oranga Tamariki. Um, there's many reasons um, why a child can end up um, before Oranga Tamariki. Um, some of them are major and some of them are just minor where, where parents just need a little bit of extra help and support um, to, to, be, to be a better parent towards their children. And then other situations, um, it's just not salvageable and, and OT has to step in and do something about it. Um, so I, I try not to look at it through the racial lens. I try to look at it as each child has their individual needs and, and we should be basing our care around that, the needs of the children, not the race of the children. Mm, except I don't know that you can get away from it because the, prime, the Deputy Prime Minister is saying that race is a critical um, understanding or a critical way in which to understand um, Oranga Tamariki, isn't it? I mean, I'm, I, listen, I've raised yeah. the question, but you, here's the Deputy Prime Minister mm. saying you've got to look at it through an ethnicity lens. Yeah, well, that's just one factor, right? One factor. Uh, I mean, ethnicity lens is a good way to look at it. And and, grow, and going through care myself, I understand that, you know. A, a, a perfect scenario would be that you can stay with Fano or, or stay in, in the situation that you're used to growing up, right? So if you're a Māori child and you, you've been around the marae um, and that, is your, that has been your culture... You, growing up, then being taken away from that could be really, really harmful. Um, and so that has to be taken into account, right? But at the end of the day, Māori children aren't much different to any other child. Um, they want to be loved, cared for and feel safe at night and know that when they're going to wake up in the morning, tomorrow is going to be a great day. Uh, and that's what I'm concentrating on, trying to make a, a better tomorrow for our children. No, good on you. Um, and finally, Karen, can I ask this question of you? Uh, for someone who's yep. not, and this is for someone who's not Maori, what is the Maori yep. worldview? We hear a lot about it in the last two years, and it's only been in the last two years it seems to have become something that is promoted mainstream. What is the Maori mm. worldview? Do you know? 
No, um, and that's a question I'm, I'm sort of asking as well, right? Because my Māori worldview might be different to my neighbour's Māori worldview. Um, I've grown up w- w- through different situations and see the world through one lens, and it's not my place to tell somebody else that they should see the world through the same lens as I do. Um, and so I don't, I, I don't really understand uh, what a Māori lens actually means. Mm, okay. Karen, thank you so much for joining us. We wish you well in your endeavours and we look forward to your follow-up question on this issue. It should be fascinating. Much appreciated. Thank you. Okay, good on you. Have a good day. Thanks. Um, Okay, so that's Karen Chaw. Chaw, uh, the Act Party MP, um, who had that exchange.